Remember that one? That's right. Strawberries cause all this, prevent all these conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess if you if you eat a strawberry or eat strawberries, mm -hmm. and then you go ahead and have some toast with butter on it, doesn't it kind of even out? One's helping, the other one's hurting, but eh, what's called a draw. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is that how you read it? I read it as yes. From both articles, eat strawberries, you prevent this. Enjoy <clears> butter, <throat> you're creating this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have a truce here because we're we're all about truth. Mm -hmm. I like toast with butter. And if I put some strawberry preserves on my toast. Preferably one that was made from strawberry powder. I can then argue that I have a completely balanced health risk. You cannot. Well, strawberries, we know, reduce the risk of heart disease, obesity, inflammation, and everything else. And at the same time, butter is raising that risk. So it's a duel. It's butter versus strawberries. Prove me wrong. All righty, everybody. Welcome back to Safety News. I am, of course, joined by my co-host, Sean, wearing his University of Texas bright orange shirt today. Look at horns, baby. We're not even going to talk about the game, so we're just going to go right into truth. Cheers. To, now is the opportunity to talk about truth in food again. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a, a topic that I think you're going to find very interesting enlightening and so let's get right into it buddy let's do it there it is safety matters in right. the news safety matters in the news sean you know one thing that you've always wanted to know more about and that's <laughs> you okay sean well i just sorry i kind of okay, we'll do this we'll do this one again though yeah okay right. sean one subject that you've always wanted to know something about and I certainly have an opinion on, because everybody has an opinion on, is butter more or less safe than margarine? Or as the headline in Fox News dated December 13th, 2023, asks, butter versus margarine, is one better for you than the other? It's a damn good question. I actually really do want to know this. <laughs> right? Don't you want to know? I do. I do. Well, yeah. let's demystify butter. Mm -hmm. We want to get to the truth. Yeah. Right. It's all about the truth. This show is about the truth. That's true. Well, a nutritionalist addresses the health food debate about butter versus margarine and some other spreads. See, it's more than just butter and margarine. Oh, there it is. There's the glorious it looks so good. Tower of <laughs> Butter. That is a cardiac arrest. It is. God, it Waiting to happen. Good. Isn't that just. Doesn't that just scream out to you? Yeah. Have you ever gone to the Texas State Fair where they have where oh, they have fried butter? Absolutely. They've fried everything. For those of you who've never heard fried. of fried butter, <laughs> you can actually go to the state of Texas uh, State Fair and they take butter, they batter it. I don't know what they put on it, and they it's frozen, and then they fry it. And so when you start to eat it, it's not liquid butter, but it's butter on a stick. Yeah. Have you ever had it, Sean? I actually have. Yeah. Tell me you don't dig that. Uh, you know what? As ridiculous as it sounds, I actually enjoyed it. it fully knowing too. Who wouldn't? Yeah. Who wouldn't? It was good. A cardiac arrest on a stick. Yeah. Anyhow, let's go ahead and jump into what's better. Cheers. Is butter better or is it margarine you should choose for your health? Quote, I think most people assume that margarine or butter replacements are a better choice for health because, well, they're lower in saturated fat which isn't necessarily true, says Jillian Kubala, a New York-based registered dietitian. And again, this was reported to Fox News Digital. They're just on top of this. Fats are often misunderstood and oversimplified, mm -hmm. even by health professionals, which has led to a general demonization and fear of fats, she also said. I don't know about demonizing fat. The truth is that fats are highly complex, and their physiological effects depend on the composition, sources, and more. Butter is simply a dairy product. Well, margarine is typically made from vegetable oils, water, and oftentimes 
with added emulsifiers and flavoring. So I ask you, Sean, mm. being that we're on the pathway of truth today, right. how safe are emulsifiers anyhow? Um, they don't sound very safe. What is an emulsifier? As I understand, emulsifier is something that changes the genetic, or I'm sorry, the chemical composition of the food and will preserve, uh, potentially preserve the food mm. for longer use. Very good, but very incorrect. Okay. Guess. Emulsifiers basically take a liquid and immerse it into another liquid to make a solid. Mm -hmm. And so you emulsify, you absorb or surround it. So that's how you get oil, which is a liquid, mm -hmm. to form into a semi-solid, like, like margarine, which is scrumptious, yeah. especially on on uh, pancakes or yeah, it toast. Is. God, you're making me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, these emulsifiers, uh, we're not certain how that all plays out, but uh, Sean, question to you. Which has more total fat? Butter? Or margarine, total fat. Man, pretty imprecise. I mean, I don't really have any insight into this per se, but I'm. Oh, gonna, I think you do. I'm gonna. You are a butter eater. I am. You are a margarine consumer. You I have am. an opinion. You I'm, probably use these products today. Have you not? Have you not put butter or margarine on something within the last twenty four hours? In the last twenty four hours, I actually have yes, but 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 the last three days, absolutely. Um, but I'm going to guess it's butter. So you're going to say butter mm -hmm. has more total fat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, typical serving size of butter, which they claim is one tablespoon. Not certain where that comes from. Not, not, not my family. I think we have more than a single serving. I, I'm, I'm at least at two servings. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just, look, Sean, that's a piece of toast. That's some pancakes. Mm -hmm. Tablespoon, eh, it's a little light. Anyhow, uh, total fat in butter, 11.5 grams, mm -hmm. 7.3 grams of saturated fat. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that this is more than margarine. Yeah, I think the question was total fat. So total I fat. think 11.5 would be higher than I'm not, I'm not trying to trick you. No, yeah, yeah. I, I want your genuine answer. Yeah, yeah. Based, on, just... your, based on your intensive background as a nutritionist <laughs> and consumer. I would of say butter and fat. I think yeah, I think butter. Okay, what's what we got here? Margarine. Mm. You are correct. Cool. And yes, saturated is lower too. So, mm. butter much lower. Ratios. Eleven point five grams mm -hmm. total. Nine point five six. You know, I'm going to call that a wash. I'm sorry, I, I don't find that to be compelling. Eleven to nine. I mean. Look, if I get a little bit less than a tablespoon of butter, I'm probably right there, right? Wait, what do you mean? Well, one tablespoon versus one tablespoon. One right. tablespoon of butter is 11.5 grams. One tablespoon of margarine is 9 point whatever, 5, 6 grams, right? So say I just go with a little bit less than a tablespoon of butter. I'm at the 9.56 pretty quick, aren't I? So you just eat a little bit less. I'll have a, I'll have I'll have three quarters of a tablespoon of butter, which has the same amount of fat as one tablespoon of margarine. I'm I'm in. I'd rather have the flavor profile of butter. See where I'm going with this? I Cut am. back the amount, reduce the total amount of fat because I'm consuming less. Agreed. So, so I think if your logic is around. I want the same amount of fat going into my body. Cool. But if it's in any way a discussion about the health consideration of that decision. Well, isn't fat part of the health equation? You need fats. The, a healthy diet requires fat. It doesn't matter. How what, much fat does a healthy diet need? Depends. You know, a healthy diet also needs strawberries. <laughs> it does. But I, I think ultimately what I'm getting at with that is it, it works on the surface. But if we do care about the ratio of saturated fat, which I think there's plenty of publications out there that have data around what saturated and trans fat does to the body. Oh, now we're talking trans fat. Excuse me, little buddy. We haven't gone there yet. <laughs> I just want to know total fat content. We're not total okay. fat. Just total, total fat? fat. Cool, with you. I'm taking the three-quarter tablespoon of butter mm -hmm. on my... 
mashed potatoes, pancakes, toast, whatever, mm -hmm. versus the one full tablespoon of margarine, yep. same amount of fat. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Agreed. Much better flavor profile. Oh, We're not absolutely. talking about trans fat. Shit. Is there even a question so far? Absolutely. I agree. Question number two. Which has more calories, butter or margarine? Butter. Butter. So butter double double tips on both fat and calories. Is that, is that what you're trying to say? Uh, Are you sure about that? Not double dips per se, but I think if it's based on calories, I think the same tablespoon of each butter would have more. Okay, what what do you think a tablespoon of butter? How many calories in a tablespoon of butter? Butter. Tablespoon of teaspoon. How many calories? I'm going to say um, probably one measly. Stinking God, I want to get little this one, I could, I I tablespoon of freaking butter. I think it has between 100 and 150. Oh, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go to, with 125. Oh. 125 calories. Oh man, there's a cardiac arrest. 125. Hmm. No, you're actually not that far off, but you are. Wrong. 102 calories. No, that's a tablespoon. Okay, that's a tablespoon. That's what they call one serving, mm -hmm. tablespoon, right? So uh, how, how much you figure margarine has? If butter's 102, 102, how much is margarine calories? I'm going to say 65. Oh. Way off. Yeah, but it's a pretty good guess. Okay. I'm going to look at the numbers one more time. Margarine, 84.8, right? Butter, 102. Mm -hmm. We'll just say 100 versus 85. Yep. I'm doing butter. Yeah. It's just not compelling. I'm That's sorry. pretty negligible. It's just, sorry. Agreed. Nope. Yep. Uh, no comparison there. Now, again, if you're like slamming down lots of butter mm -hmm. and or margarine, it will probably make a difference. Really, but yeah. as you said, Russ... I haven't had butter or margarine today, but I probably had it in the last three days. Was that a quote? Absolutely. Okay, so you're not consuming that much. Right. Let's be honest here. Right. You know, okay. And I want that buttery goodness, especially on my popcorn. Oh. Oof. Who puts margarine on popcorn? Darn right. Yeah, yeah that's bullshit. <laughs> and you know, the story went on. Margarine, for example, can be made with oils that are high in omega-6 fats. Researchers said, while both omega-3 and omega-6 fats are necessary for health, along with strawberries, most Americans consume diets much higher in omega-6s. Uh, Kubala, the researcher said, pointing to a 2021 study published by the Journal of the Missouri State Medical Association. Now, there's a publication that's on everybody's <laughs> cocktail table. I mean, am I right? You've, of course, read that. I have not. That issue. I appreciate good information wherever it comes, but I'm not familiar with that. Well, I'm not really familiar with this whole omega-6 and omega-3 debate, if there is one. Right. But the research studied it. Omega-6s are concentrated in vegetable oils rather than omega-3s, which, which are concentrated in seafood. <coughs> seafood. And certain plant foods, like <laughs> here Seafood's we are. my favorite food. Ch chia seeds. Ch -ch 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 chia. <laughs> the chia pet. Remember that the chia head. Ch -ch -ch chia. <laughs> Ch -ch -ch chia. God, man, oh, I miss man. chia pet. That's Christmas, man. That's Christmas. We should that, get that a chia pet. Chia pet just screams Christmas. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyhow, chia seeds. So here we go. This leads to an imbalance. Favoring omega-6s, which tend to be more inflammatory in nature, over omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory. Uh, follow the bouncing ball. Here we go again. Time to throw the bullshit flag. Omega-6s versus omega-3s. Both are important, but one can't have more than you need. Mm -hmm. We got we to gotta ration those. Mm -hmm. uh, not certain where the chia seeds come in, but, uh, you know, both are important. Right. But they have to be balanced. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, why? Great question. She continued. 
Health experts, ah, health experts, the unnamed health experts, suggest that the dietary imbalance is a major driver behind many chronic inflammatory conditions, including, here we go, Sean, you know what's coming, Mm -hmm. (laughs) metabolic syndrome, obesity, increased heart risk. Uh, disease risk factors, cancers, and cognitive de- decline. So where did we hear this research come from? Oh, that's right. The strawberry episode we did a couple of weeks ago. Remember that one? That's right. Strawberries cause all this, prevent all these conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess if you, if you eat a strawberry or eat strawberries, mm-hmm. and then you go ahead and have some toast with butter on it, doesn't it kind of even out? One's helping, the other one's hurting, but eh, what's called a draw. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Is that how you read it? I read it as yes. From both articles, eat strawberries, you prevent this. Enjoy <clears> butter, <throat> you're creating this. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have a truce here because we're we're all about truth. Mm-hmm. I like toast with butter. And if I put some strawberry preserves on my toast. Preferably one that was made from strawberry powder. I can then argue that I have a completely balanced health risk. You cannot. Well, strawberries, we know, reduce the risk of heart disease, obesity, inflammation, and everything else. And at the same time, butter is raising that risk. So it's a duel. It's butter versus strawberries. Prove me wrong. Uh, Okay. Researchers, the researchers are not clear on this point. They're not there. They're not. I agree. I agree. The researchers themselves are not, but I do think there are some knowns that we can... Well, let's talk about those knowns. Right. One study published in 2022 in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found that people who consume more than half a tablespoon, half a tablespoon, seven grams of olive oil. Ooh, thrown that into the mix. Olive oil. If you consume seven grams of olive oil per day, well, these folks have lower risk of dying from cardiovascular disease, cancer, neurodegenerative disease. I assume that means Alzheimer's and dementia. And now here's a new one. Here's a new one, Sean. Respiratory disease. Mm-hmm. A little bit of olive oil, bang. You're on the up-and-coming health risk scale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Researchers also found that people live longer when they replace 10 grams per day of margarine and butter, mayonnaise, and dairy fat with olive oil. Mm. Again, this is reported to the Fox News digital uh, folks. Um, olive oil. So we're going to throw a mix in there. No, you can't put olive oil on my toast. Olive oil doesn't taste real well on pancakes. No. Not certain how you would use olive oil in the in the average day. Give me an example. Of, oh, hell, we'll just put some olive oil on it. Mm-hmm. I'd, well, I'll, I'll say this. Here's an example. I wonder if that I dislike olive oil, but maybe on a salad. Here's an example. I actually did a good amount of cooking over the past few days. And uh, that cooking included for groups. And some were more conscious of how much butter was used versus how much olive oil was used. And I'll give you an example of a food that I cook that traditionally I've done both. But Wait a minute. Yeah. You cook? Mm-hmm. Yes. You cook? What What do you cook? So, uh, a number of things, primarily uh, fish, poultry, beef, vegetables, and then, I mean, that's- Oh, uh, that that narrows it down. Thank you. So, you put olive oil on your what? Specifically, in this case, fish. So, what I use to cook salmon, I prefer to actually cook it with a base of olive oil instead of butter to sear the pan. You're insane. Why? Olive oil is not a replacement for butter, even on salmon. Salmon. But if but but let me think about this because the marinade of the salmon beforehand. Oh, I, you marinated salmon. Okay, I did. Well, I did add a, that answers that a slick of butter too on top. Oh, of the well, so I did. I did both. I did both. Cheater, cheater, cheater! But if, if you I'm, put the butter on it, oh, then you mask it with the olive oil. You double dipped. I did. You? It could have been done without the butter. So, but, but the point of that was I ultimately chose to cook it in real time the day of within olive oil, not butter itself. Okay. I'm getting hungry. Back to the research. (laughs) (laughs) While it's important to avoid certain high fat foods, such as fried foods, uh, 
This general recommendation to cut back on foods high in saturated fat like butter and replace them with low-fat alternatives like margarine hasn't done much good, Sean, for Mm. public health. Do you know that? Hasn't been working, according to the research. Rates of chronic health conditions like type 2 diabetes, obesity, have steadily climbed over time as Americans became more dependent, more dependent on low-fat foods, like sugary carbohydrates, low-fat salad dressings, and butter replacements. So Mm. what they're really saying, Sean, is you can't fool Mother Nature. You try to dodge the bullet, and it comes right back and gets you. The buttery goodness. Look at this, Sean. Tell me you don't want to. Oh. I'd lick that right off that yeah, saying, right that's off a, that, the knife. That yeah, that's amazing. Margarine. Look how fluffy and delicious it looks. Now, don't they make like a uh, olive oil version of margarine? If they do, I want no part I've of it. I've seen it. I've seen yeah. it. I've seen it. Uh, yeah. It's an olive oil version. Anyhow, uh, thinking, yeah. as we all do, of all saturated fats is bad and unsaturated fats is good or healthy isn't the way to view macronutrients, she said, she being the researcher. Quote, butter isn't inherently harmful and can be incorporated in most healthy, well-rounded dietary patterns. In my opinion, eating small amounts of butter is a better choice for overall health than consuming highly processed butter replacements like margarine. Mm. So, it doesn't matter about calories, doesn't matter about total fat, does it? Not according to some. Okay. With that in mind, I'm producing this show today, and I check my email, and I get a email, interestingly, on the same subject, out of the blue. Go figure. Wow. And I wanted to share it with you. Please. This is a research by Dr. Simon. Okay. Okay. And it's called The Hidden Dangers of Vegetable Oils. Note, the hateful eight, Sean. The hateful eight. Hmm. These are the eight types of oils that are considered processed Okay, mm-hmm. and are toxic. You eat, you consume sunflower or sunflower oil, soy oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, which is, I got to imagine the most popular, mm-hmm. uh, rice bran oil. Never heard of that. Yeah. Grapeseed oil. I've heard of that, but it's pretty pricey. Or canola oil, which is like what French fries are made from, right? Yep. So according to Doctor Simon, he sends me an email. Informing me of the hateful eight, warning me that these eight oils are toxic to my health. And you and I say, bullshit. Ooh. I'm throwing down. I'm not buying the story from Dr. Simon. Is that his first name or last name? Simon. Who is this Simon? What's Simon says, Simon says eight oils suck and are really bad for you. Well, oh, okay. Maybe justify it, but we were told butter is bad for you. Now we're told butter is not that bad. Margin's not as good as what we thought. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is. All right. My conclusion Mm -hmm. is, as usual, the research is inconclusive. More research is needed. We never never even learned about samples who who, was in the research pool, right? We didn't even know who these people are. But we know one thing. Anything in moderation is good. Anything in excess is probably bad. And that includes everything in, in life, right? You have you can die from drinking too much water. Yeah. People do. So uh, you can call it uh, whatever you want. I'm sorry, Dr. Simon. I'm not buying into the hateful eight. Not certain who Dr. Simon is or what his agenda is, but I have consumed, and you have consumed many of these oils. Mm-hmm. We're not dead. And uh, so I just want the truth mm-hmm. to be known that uh, butter is not that bad. Uh, margin is okay, uh, and the uh, the other types of oils in moderation are healthy. I mean, what's wrong with a good French fry every now and then? You you turn on a French fry? Is that all canola oil or vegetable oil? Mm-hmm. Come on, who doesn't like that? Something, Tell me you don't like French fries, Sean. I love French and fries. And French fries are healthy, right? What's <laughs> right. wrong with a French fry? It's a healthy diet. I think French fries, right, the right amount, it's not going to harm your health and longevity. I think if you're now, let's get it, let's... This is where it gets interesting. Before I jump into this area, I think part what I'm growing very interested in, right? This story, the strawberry story, and just other nutritional info out there is I feel like there's more complexity than true answers. And I think I'm thinking to myself, why is this the case? Why is 
health reporting and foods and nutrition, such a ambiguous topic when it really comes down to do X equals Y. And I feel like it comes back to a few things. The human body is infinitely complex, right? Uh, if, if that's not the case, bring on any expert that can explain every function, uh, every aspect of our anatomy and scientific and medical occurrences that truly cannot be explained. That's the first thing is we don't have a perfect understanding of the human body. Well, and, and to that point, what you how you consume oils, mm-hmm. which are extremely diverse, with other foods mm-hmm. that they interact metabolically in mm-hmm. your in your body is as you put very complex. See, it's not a black and white and thank you by the way. It's not a black and white subject. This not is good, all. that is bad. Everything in moderation. Mm-hmm. And you're going to use certain types of oils with different types of dishes, right? Um where, you know, olive oil for like pasta. It's awesome. You don't put butter in your pasta. But olive oil. So there's so if you say, well, hey, look, I'm going to eat more pasta and olive oil because it's healthier, only to find out that all those carbs, uh, as in my case, go right to my thighs, mm-hmm. um, and you gain weight. Mm-hmm. So you have a high carb diet, but you're using healthy olive oil. Mm-hmm. How could that be? Well, it's because of the combination. And see, this research doesn't explain the big picture, and that is how much are you consuming right. um, with what other you know, dishes are you consuming it with? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you really kind of sum it all up, mm-hmm. um, I'd rather die at 79, having lived the full life of eating butter, than die at 83 in a nursing home saying, <laughs> you know. I think that's really the key. It's which quality is- of life. I want to I want to enjoy food. I want to, again, in moderation. Right. And what I read what I what I interpret from all this research is it's always the same doom and gloom. Yeah. It's always the same things that you really like and enjoy in life we're going to take away from you. We're going to deny you. Right. The things that you really enjoy in life. Here's the one challenge. Earlier you said eating french fries is bad for you. And I agree. I think that's an accurate statement. But then if we do play this as black and white or binary, meaning we take it to the extremes. We can make some pretty solid claims, right? So for anybody that remembers the documentary Super Size Me, where Morgan Spurlock literally goes on a- I love that. I loved it too. And he had like kidney failure or liver failure? He ate McDonald's every day for 30 days, every meal, three meals a day. And I think by the end of one month of just eating food that we all enjoy, right? Everyone enjoys a good burger, shake, fries, et cetera. But when that's your only dietary existence- it will literally shut your right. body down. But you know, you can say that about anything. If you just eat one thing too much, um, it can cause some adverse health effects. I mean, that, that's true. And now, don't get me wrong. No one's claiming that McDonald's, including McDonald's, is claiming that their food is healthy. Maybe they would. Now, they can justify it by saying, well, you know, a Big Mac without cheese is healthier than a Big Mac with cheese. And by the way, is that even cheese that's on a Big Mac? What is that? Yeah, it's it's like plastic. It's processed. like a melted something. That's certain. But but, yeah. but we're not arguing health of a Big Mac. We're arguing health of, you know, of eating a McDonald's diet 24-7. And and I saw that. I mean, he he gained some mass, he gained some weight, and he got really sick. In fact, his doctor said, stop eating McDonald's. I, I think it's fair to assume if if he continued that for another month, he'd probably be dead. Uh, that's not official. It's not fact. But my whole point is, again, not to not to put down the foods that we love, right? We all love foods, whatever it may be, French fries. I do think there's elements of the news may also create a certain fear or a guilt about enjoying certain things that we all enjoy. On the on the other side, I'll I'll say, Russ, where I feel a little bit is some of this is on again the individual for them to decide. You know, if you really enjoy XYZ foods, like my family's example, we like to eat also. And I have myself gone through fluctuations of weight gain and weight loss. And so I have a test. This all starts with I've tested with my own body. And um, if you really enjoy the pizza and you want to eat the pizza several times a week, enjoy the pizza. But at the same time, accept that the contents on a pizza will probably have an effect on your body more so than the veggies and the fish or the veggies and the turkey breast. So I think this is where it's... You know, Sean, maybe we should throw tofu in there. That's an area I don't know much about, but... Mm. 
Yeah. Tofu. Yeah. Uh, substitutes, right? I mean, there's a whole nother community that doesn't care for animal protein. Um, I've been. Cur- yeah, what community is that, by the way? Is that the, the vegans? The vegans, mm. the, the people that are always claiming how healthy are, they are is they're the most sickly freaking people you've ever seen in your life. All the vegans, I'm so <laughs> healthy. They're skinny, pale, gaunt, get sick all the time, but they're healthy. Look, go be a vegan. Go eat nuts and whatever the hell you want to eat. But look, I, I just don't like this whole, you know, the hateful eight hate stuff. I'm sorry. I'm just not into hate. I don't like hate. I agree. Stop demonizing sunflower oil. You know. You know, let's be honest, grapeseed oil, I've had that on a salad. Mm-hmm. I remember that. But how much of that can you really eat? I mean, some of this stuff's pretty pricey. Corn oil, I mean, corn oil's everywhere, right? Everybody's cooking with corn oil. I mean, isn't that you deep fry your, your turkeys at Thanksgiving and is corn oil? Or is it peanut oil? Hey, by the way, where's peanut oil on this oh, list? God, I love peanut I didn't oil. see peanut oil in here. So pe- peanut uh, oil is not the hateful egg. I'm not taking peanut oil out ever because that's Chick-fil-A, baby. And that no. stuff is amazing. Um, yeah. You know, I'm, well, a, I'm on a strict Whataburger diet. I, I My doctor it. put me on it. I had it yesterday, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, what, one thing, I, I have a question, right? Just call to action again to myself. That hateful eight said ultra processed. I'm really, really curious at what processed means within all contexts. Of yeah, what does processed mean? I don't know. What does processed oil mean? I mean, I, okay. I'm going to take a shot at this. Sure. Oil comes from a grape. Okay. Well, most of what they squeeze out of a grape has not, it's not all oil. It's like other stuff, like liquid grape <laughs> stuff, grape juice. So then they have to process the liquid, mm-hmm. the squeezings from the grape into its separate components, which includes oil. Mm-hmm. So is that what they mean by processed? Is they clarify it? They purify it? I mean, what's what's sunflower oil isn't it just like the oil from a sunflower mm-hmm. what's the process part as far as i understand it's like if you're just taking the oil you get the oil out of the thing and you put it into its container but process could i think is any uh process quite literally to me means any process it goes outside of the oil itself <laughs> any any alteration <clears throat> That, but, well, that uh, that definitely makes everything very clear now. Um, yeah. So confusion in the headlines yet again. This time, sorry, the, this, is, this yep. time the truth detective try detectives try to get to the bottom of it and come up empty-handed. So you're on your own, America, to decide for yourself what kind of oil you want to consume and what quantities you want to consume, and whether that includes uh, butters and fats and um, you know. Omega sixes, omega threes. Let me ask you this, Russ. Do you think there's a place? Well, let me start. Do you think schools K through twelve in the U.S. address how to make your diet or how to make nutritional oh, choices? Schools. <laughs> what do schools teach that's of any value today? You know, did you see the the study that? Uh, the, interesting. I read this a few weeks ago. Not to divert. Uh, from this topic, but uh, 74%, 74% of American high school graduates believe that Alaska, the state of Alaska, is an island. That is... Because when I saw it on a map, you know, it's kind of off to the left there with Hawaii, mm-hmm. and it's not to scale. So they thought that Alaska was just this... this floating island right and had no have no clue that it's actually connected to north america specifically canada so that's what american children are learning in school not to mention diversity equity inclusion and all those life (laughs) skills to really guide you through making life's most difficult decisions right uh so no they don't learn math they don't learn geography they don't learn about economics right Clueless. Yeah. And, of course, when it comes to eating properly, uh, no. They learn very little. Because remember what the number one profession that most high school graduates aspire to be? What is it? The number one thing that you ask a high school grad, high school student, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you think it is? That's a great question. Oh, I know the answer. This is, this is when it... I honestly have no idea, but I'm going to guess a... Yeah, um, no, you didn't. Sports star? Oh no, no. Ready? Yeah, an influencer. 
Oh, now, yeah. yeah, yeah that's an influencer. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. sure. It makes perfect sense. Mm. Um, but that tells you where we are. Where we are as a country, nobody knows anything about health. And they read these headlines. They believe nonsense. If you were to ask the average person wow. uh, that's wolfing down their Chick-fil-A, uh, what kind of what kind of oil is it cooked in? They're like, Beat it, baby. D- 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 they, they cook it in oil? Yes. They don't even know that. I mean, the average person, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that's I have such sauce. low, yeah. it's such a low bar of information in America today that if you were to ask an American anything, and maybe not just an American, anybody, ask, ask anybody anything about anything, they don't really know. They so, really don't know. Well, Russ, I think you're right. And I guess this is where I get passionate because I think we spend so much time in school and you know, again, I'm thankful for the education that I received, but as I look back on it, there was so much opportunity to teach us really relevant and practical things that would actually be our existence, ages 22, right? College, uh, college graduation age onwards for the next 60 plus years, if we're looking at average life expectancy. Teach people how to manage their finances, teach people how to make nutritional choices or read a nutritional label, teach people how to talk to one another. I mean, those are pretty basic things that I I think school, you know, you, you talk to other kids, but none of this stuff is so reinforced. Yeah, but you're missing the most important aspect. I mean, come on, Sean. How did, how did you, it's glaringly obvious what's more important. Your pronouns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, I have a um, oh, man. young gentleman in my family who's a college student, and he um, was getting pressured to use pronouns by his school. And they actually asked him, this is a, this is a, this is true. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he confessed this to me <laughs> in his moment of weakness. When I asked him, what pronoun would you like to go by? <laughs> so this is not a joke. Actually, I, it is a joke. T- what, do, what, yeah. do you think, what do you think he said? He said um, him. He said Mr. Oh, Mr. Okay. Got it? Cheers. Okay. Yeah, that's a high school graduate now in college. What is What pronoun would you like to uh, be called? And he said, uh, Mr. Love it. Cool. And you wonder why we are where we are <laughs> as a country. Um, so here we are talking about truth as it relates to saturated fats and uh, the hateful eight and the average American. And I agree with you. I think we, we should teach really basic life skills like balancing a checkbook, uh, maybe cooking. I mean, that'd be a nice thing. People learned how to cook in, in, in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, economics, something about interest rates, something about money. Yeah, like, um, yes, you know, what is the gross domestic product? Why does that matter? God, Let's talk about inflation. Oh, Just the, the things that affect everybody's life, like when you go to buy a car and you have to finance it. Most people are like, well, um, I don't know how much it costs, but my budget is $249 a month or $659 a month. What a pick a number. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all they know. And or, so we're buying a home. The buying big, a home. The most expensive purchase all of us will make. Who really spends time covering that? You're up left to your own personal desire and interest to not right. make a silly choice. And so guess what? Here's the good news. God. Good news on the frontier. Based on our economic uh, condition, you don't have to worry about buying a home because most people aren't going to have a home. Sad, but true. Don't worry. Who needs a house anyhow? You're happy living in your mom's basement. Of course, mom's not happy about it. But uh, anyhow, Sean, with that, we're going to bring this to a close. Thanks for uh, the, the, the lively, lighthearted conversation, a little joviality. Um, and so uh, I had to wear the truth hat today because the truth is uh, really important when it comes to um, e- people's health, you know, and, and understanding just the, uh, you know, the things that you're reading may, may negatively and positively impact your health. Mm-hmm. But I'm a big believer in moderation. You don't have to slam it down every day, but a Whataburger every now and then isn't going to hurt you. No. Would you agree? Very much so. And and you're that's coming from a Chick-fil-A lover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love Chick-fil-A. I love Whataburger, too. Um, and... <laughs> Actually, you got me on a topic. Now, well, two, before you go on, wasn't were you the guy that said that you dated a girl who said I oh, would yeah. never date a guy that ate at Chick Fil A? <laughs> yeah, is that this, true? This is a true story. Now I, you know this is public. It's now the whole world has heard you say you eat at Chick Fil A. Oh yeah, I mean, this I'm, would really kill your dating. Oh yeah, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm proud of that. I love <laughs> Chick Fil A. Doom you if someone's going to make me give up Chick Fil A for whatever reason. Um, in this case, yeah, I went on a date with a lady and. Within our first 30 minutes of conversation, somehow Chick-fil-A came into it. 
And she's like, you eat at Chick-fil-A? And I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. He's like, I can't, I can't be with anybody who eats at Chick-fil-A. And I was like, it's amazing. And I told her, I was like, this isn't going to work out then. <laughs> Love Chick-fil-A. Let's go Chick-fil-A. So. I'm sorry to hear your life, your lifestyle, your love life took a hit for a, yeah. For yeah. a fried chicken. The sacrifices Sandwich. we make. All right, Sean, we're done with this segment. Thanks for uh, everything. And uh, we will be back Cheers. next time. Bye, uh, everyone. With the truth. Always first and foremost, in front of our minds. So until then, this is Russ Kenzior and Sean Joseph wishing you a uh, happy and safe day. And, uh, and uh, until next time, take care. Bye, everyone.